Abraham, as a young child, started looking at the world, looking at life, and he came to a, an amazing conclusion, contrary to all of the people around him, that this world cannot just exist on its own. Things cannot be happening the way they happen without someone running it, without someone in charge. And he found God in a place of darkness, in a time of darkness. And he started doing something amazing, which when we start to discuss the mitzvah what it, of what it means to truly love God, when you love God so much that you bump into someone on the street and he has to know you love him also. Avram didn't, didn't stop at knowing that there was a God and that's it. He made it his life mission that the entire world should know that this world has a creator and that, he's in, that he cares about this world and that he's here with us. That was Avram's life mission. Kirov. Kirov, Kirov, exactly. He went up against the world leader, the king of the world, we'll say, Nimrod. And Nimrod tried to stop him by throwing him into a furnace. And Hashem made a miracle and saved his life. Now, the story actually involves Avram and his brother. So when Avram came back home and started telling his family about his revelations and the truth of Hashem, so they, they followed him. They, they understood him and they believed in him. His brother, um, Haran, believed him and was with him. But when Avram was taken captive and thrown in the fire, so the moment before he was thrown in the fire, Haran was telling to himself, if Avraham survives this, 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 this situation, if, if Hashem, if God makes him a miracle and he lives through this, then I'm with Avraham. But if he dies in the fire, then I will have to side with Nimrod, because of course I have to live. And what happened? God made a miracle for Avraham, and he survived. And then they turned to Haran and said, who are you with? So he said, of course, I'm with Avraham. And they threw him into the fire, and he died. Haran died in front of Terach, before or in front of Terach. And from that word in this week's Parsha, we learn the entire story of Avraham and Orkazdim, and how he's thrown into this fire. He did this great Mesir Nefesh and lived. And Haran died. The Arizal explains Api Kabbalah really what happened. We have to know that Avraham, Haran, and actually his brother Nahor were, were three holy souls. Avraham had a divine mission from Hashem to stand up for God, Al Kiddush Hashem, and risk his life and to be saved and to be the father of a nation that will follow in his footsteps. <coughs> Haran, with a very holy soul, had a mission also to do something that we don't even understand how holy and how lofty it brings our soul in heaven to die al Kiddush Hashem. That was what he was created for. His soul came down into this world to die and, and there, through that giving God name honor. When he stood there wavering, maybe yes, maybe no. And so when Avram was saved, he said yes, but it was a wavering yes. He, was, he wasn't really devoted 100% to, to Avram. So even though he died, the Arizal says that his soul did not fulfill its purpose in coming to the world because he did it half-heartedly. And therefore he had to come back again to fulfill his mission. When did he come back again? The million dollar question. What other biblical character can we think of that has a name that resembles, because God gave us a hint that he made the names resemble each other. What other character in the Bible resembles the name Haran? Unbelievable. Didn't take, that didn't take long at all. You just saved the audience five minutes of this talk. <laughs> Aharon! Aharon! You were going to say Aharon? Okay. Is Haran with a hay? Haran is hay resh, no? and Aharon is a Haran with an aleph in the front. So I'm not sure if you can all appreciate where I'm coming from, but when I read the story and learned the story of, of this whole Cheta Egel, it bothered me. I'm reading a story. How does Av how is Aaron a coin? I mean, Aaron, it wasn't a coin yet. How does Aaron get involved and be part of making this egg? I'm like, what in this world is going on? We can theorize that why wouldn't Aaron give up his life instead of being part of creating an idol? 
And that's the question we all have. Why did Aaron say, okay, fine, come back and I'll, I'll make it for you tomorrow? But the answer is, is what we're going to discuss now. Hor did what we think any real tzaddik, any God-fearing person that's a tzaddik, would do. We stood up against the Erev Rav and they killed him. So Aaron saw that they killed Hor and he reasoned that Hor with Ruach HaKodesh, Hor had, was also had in him a Gilgul of Haran, a different part of the Shana so he said to himself, if Chor was already killed, then seemingly Haran's soul received its tikkun. And now the job is not to die for Hashem anymore, but to live. And therefore, Aaron stole them. And understand, if Aaron understood that the neshama of Haran did not get its tikkun yet, he would have been happy to give up his life as we see from Rabbi Akiva, that was waiting for the day that they would take his life and he can honor God in that way. This whole idea needs explanation, but without the deep explanation, it's a big thing in a few words. So when they came to Aaron, he said, okay, well, you know, Haran's neshama is fixed. Right now, let's, let's live. Let's try to fix the problem. Let's try to stall. And of course, the, the, the eagle was made. So the Arizal tells us that Hashem was very angry with Aaron and his, his miscalculation. Because what Aaron was supposed to do was to be killed. And so that moment for Haran to get his tikkun did not come. And it was many, many generations later where that neshama finally did get its tikkun. But it's just an insight to understand a little bit about how deep the story of the Torahs, the Torah and the story of our ancestors really go. We don't even know that Avram existed until next week. Yet there's a life of information. There's this unbelievable deep information and things that happened all before we even start to learn about him. He gave up his life, his brother gave, gave up his life heartedly, and later on they all have to come back in, in a reincarnation to fix, fix that problem. So this is what we would call the hidden, untold story of Avraham in Parshas Noah. And so the, the secret, you know, story, the secret star, so to speak, of this week's Parsha is really Avraham because this is where everything is set up for him to become the the, the next leader after Noah, and when he takes over the leadership, it becomes the birth and beginning of what become the Jewish people.